What's up, everybody? Emperor John Kill 3D Gaming here with another video, and I should be working on Mass Effect 3's video, getting through that playthrough for uh, the conclusion to my Mass Effect trilogy review for the Legendary Collection. But War for Wakanda just dropped today, and let me make this clear: I don't know what planet we live on, where people who review games nowadays have sticks so far up their ass they still don't know fun from depressing a la everybody that gave the last of us two perfect scores and the golden stick dick award anyway marvel's avengers is quite an anomaly to me you know i picked it up one time on sale about twenty bucks haven't really got into playing it until recently just so I could prepare myself for this war for Wakanda thing, just so I could see what it's like. Now I'm gonna go right out the bat. Whoever told you that you need to put mic that you need to use microtransactions to get things in this game, yeah, they they need to just stick their head in the ground like a fucking ostrich. Because not once have I bought any microtransactions, and in no less than maybe two days, with breaks in between. I was able to level up four characters when I was told in reviews that oh it could take you weeks to level up one character I mean I wonder if there's a disconnect going on here because I didn't play the game when it initially had its problems so I have no experience with that I'm playing the game as is right now and to say the game right now in its current state is bad is disingenuous and a highly fabricated lie at best and I understand that some youtubers have to do it because their audience it's what's expected of them but no we don't go for the typical shit here so Marvel's Avengers throw that out the notion right now that you don't need microtransactions to unlock things they're optional for you for just costumes calling cards shit that you could unlock in the game on a norm and there's multiple different avenues to be able to unlock everything or unlock the things you want now yeah there's exclusive stuff like movie themed costumes that you would have to necessarily pay for or event costumes but other than that you really don't have to drop a dime in fact you earn an increments you will earn the microtransactions to use which is the only time I've used it to get a specific costume or so but not once did no money come out of my wallet for the resources in this game everything I have gotten is completely hard work with breaks you know it makes me reminds me of something damn it reminds me about that time that I uh, really gave the middle finger to people who said Battlefront 2 was gonna be permanently bad but uh redeemed itself i'm starting to get flashbacks because marvel's avengers feels exactly the same thing that i said for star wars battlefront 2 how i said it will take specific uh retoolings and changes to make the game better and some people are saying why can't we just have an online Mar marvel ultimate alliance type game i i i think these people are blind because we've been playing it uh, me and my friends, I've been playing it. Now, let's just get what people set out the way. Let's just not count them or anything here. How is what I have played and viewed? And I must say, I mean, compared to all the MMOs out there, it's funny how I still, I play, I like, actually have more fun playing this one than any other MMO that I have played in recent memory. And some people try to compare this to Destiny 2. Yeah, no don't do that because at least I give the developers of this game one thing they're not charging you to buy expansions which contain core elements to their game a la the destiny franchise where you have to purchase 
forty dollar expansions fifty dollars just to get two expansions and then for what shit that should have been in the game day one but I've already been on that I've been on a destiny tangent in the past and I don't need to summon their their fanboys now this game is whole it's a wholly original type of Marvel MMO compared to the other ones because there were some other ones that have actually closed down this one I would have to say even playing it on your own or playing it with a friend or two like a squad you'll still have a good kick you know good kicks to play now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover just the online portion where you play with friends or play alone because that's the part of the game that people really bashed the most and the stories I'll save later I'll do an entire video devoted to the four campaigns that are available in the game because it's not just one campaign it's four campaigns so that's there's that but for this one I gotta say playing the online it's easy to do everything you can easily do stuff on your own or the only time I notice that I get kicked out of matches with players is when their connection is bad because when my friends and I play and we have good connections we never got dropped we never had a lag problem we never had any hardcore glitches that people have had so I would say it really just they need to anchor out uh, different ways of having the connection work for people who have lower internet now it has everything an MMO would have with its tropes you know grabbing different dailies doing different missions and if someone tells you that there is not a wide variety of missions in this game yeah that's another thing that the game debunks right in front of you there's different missions with different objectives and in fact there's objectives within the main objective you have to go to you let's say you jump into a war zone area there's maybe four side objectives which could benefit your bonus in the long run of the match and then you can go do the main one see the, what I like is nothing is timed you know unless it refreshes the map but that's it everything you can do these missions at your own leisure when you drop in and it's actually accessible to play it on your own because you can unlock it at your pace or play it with for see that's why I think a lot of people seem to ignore that it is fun with friends it's fun with friends to play and it also can be fun to play on your own because let's be real people expect too much out of superhero games what does a superhero game need to be honestly they're trying to say it's just a beat em up against generic enemies that's every superhero game we've ever played it's just this is online and yes I can after playing Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 2 and 3 I can confidently say that this is a Marvel Ultimate Alliance online feeling experience just not with the top-down camera this is third person you can control one person at a time or level up your preferred Avenger then going to the databases and going into your operations you can early go to see in each objective what you need to do like I said there's four there's five things at the war table the four campaigns and the overall arching world as you can see where I ranked up champion is basically let's call champion the prestige mode I got to the I got to that in no less than like I said two days three now because of the Wakanda uh, DLC which I'll do a separate video on when I experience more of it and play its campaign but there is enough variety here there is different enemy types including adding the Wakandan enemy types which are different I fought each villain differently and each grunt and minion differently yes there's a faction that has nothing but robots but every faction in a superhero genre has robots so again my, something that's like minor complaints people turn into full-fledged criticisms which I'm wondering how far do people have to reach nowadays when they do their reviews so at most you're really not even gonna use the quick match feature you're gonna end up going to what is called the danger room to practice if you want to get good with the gameplay and the gameplay is very easy to master you know it feels very familiar to other superhero beat-em-ups and the characters don't all feel the same now yeah their button prompt commands when it comes to L1 R1 L2 and R2 
are similar to do your ultimates or grapples, but they do feel different. Like with Captain America, he's strong and fast and agile, so he's like an average build for an average player. To use someone like Hawkeye, who has no powers, he requires a lot of skill-based precision. Uh, blah, blah, precisioning. Fucking the Incredible Hulk. You're going to use him to just go in and clean house because you feel that he is a powerhouse. Thor, same thing. But Thor's has unique little aspects. Like, one detail that's in the game that I noticed by accident was when you throw the hammer at an enemy, the enemy can't get up off the ground until you recall the hammer back. So, little details like that is something I'm surprised people either didn't notice, missed, or chose to ignore out of sheer arrogance to do a review or yeah blind ignorance we'll, we'll call it that you know willful ignorance so the only glitches I've ever seen is with captain's shield which can easily be fixed when you do a, a combo or so because you'll still see the swivel hanging off of his shield and maybe there was one time that we threw an enemy so high that yeah he was stuck in the air so somebody with a flying uh, flying hero had to kill him or a long-ranged weapon but other than that, we didn't have no problems. We didn't have as much crashes or slowdowns as we thought. The game ran relatively well for us, and it ran for me in my own downtime. So I really think it's just more so, depending on what kind of internet you're connecting to and the other person's internet, will determine when it crashes or not. And from exper from what I'm seeing by experience, yeah, that's, the, that's what I'm going to go with on that, and it's been proven. But... What else I have to say about this game is it feels, even with all this stuff in it, it still feels that there's a lot more. But for right now, it's developing slowly. You know, that's what I have to say about it. Avengers, this experience, yes, I'm not going to deny it. It's flawed. It's a flawed experience. But it's also a simple and easy experience. You won't get lost. Any player of any skill type can come in and play this game. Which is the one thing I haven't seen anybody even mention is is the accessibility. You know, it has good accessibility for people. If, let's say, you just don't want to play the campaigns, you jump right to the multiplayer. It's going to be very simple for you. You can have a kick out of a couple hours on your own, or if you want to do the challenges. Now, there's one thing I do truly hate, and I've noticed it across all versions when not only looking at mine, but looking on the internet and watching other people's experience. The load time between matches and waiting for the mission to start, but it, it's not, at least you're not looking at a black screen, which is something commendable. You at least see the characters in the Quinjets uh, doing their own thing, talking with one another sometimes, or you'll hear objectives, but I think uh, either m more background stuff that needs to go on, or find a way to speed up the load times, because it could take about at least 45 to a minute before you jump maybe a minute and a half before everyone can get loaded in and then you get dropped to the ground now when you at least get dropped into the war zone this is what I want to say the war zones are varied there's enough space for people who can fly for acrobatic people uh, for people who to prefer on the ground at least the stages are built around what these characters can do like Black Panther, Captain America, Hawkeye, Black Widow, people like that are very agile. They're going to roam, you know, be able to glide across the walls if they run. But there's also many things you can do in the map before going to your main objective. See, you don't feel restricted by the main objective. You can just go in, complete your challenges, complete your missions that you have to do on the side on your own for your character's benefit. Then choose to go to the main objective it, you can go around and find the materials you need to increase your gear and people saying oh the gear makes you feel weak that's another lie because my gear even when I was like say at level 30 I was fighting these bosses going into the challenge 4 and challenge 5 even though it says I'm under level I was still able to beat up the enemies and get different and more powerful gear to increase my character because like my type of character is playing people like captain playing these brawler type characters because I can control the situation I can go in go out find what we need and collect the loot and bounce 
compared to other games where, as much as I like Borderlands 2, when you beat Borderlands 2, you just go back and you do the same missions over and over again, but the Borderlands games are beloved. You're just going in to get guns. That's the same thing with this game. It has that type of feel, that Borderlands feel where you go in and you're just collecting this to make your character stronger for the big super villain boss battles. You know, now with each of these characters having different... Uh, I, forgot, I forgot his name. He was the villain from the campaign that has got the big head. But you fight Ulysses Claw, by my understanding, in the Wakandan. You fight Taskmaster. You fight Abomination. You do fight more D-tier to C-tier villains. And hopefully they're going to start adding more B and A-tier. So... Avengers still has a lot of room to grow, but right now in its current state, if you get it for 20 bucks, it's not a bad thing. If you can get your groups of friends together, it's not bad. It's going to bring you reminiscent memories of cooperating together in the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games, but most content creators won't cover that. Some people like Seal, who calls people Marvel's Avengers beta testers but shows how much he really loves the game by just constantly talking about it and giving it traction. Yeah, be consistent in your beliefs, people, when you make a video game, because if I, or not make, make a video, a video, blah, 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 can't fucking talk straight. When you make a video based on a video game, be sure to keep all your facts together, people, because if I find any flaws in your logics, I will debunk it and basically show you where you are wrong as much as people could do the same with me. But I feel... Marvel's Avengers, this game will have the same turnaround that Battlefront 2 had and might have a little bit longer trajectory. But that's all I got to say. Be sure to like, subscribe, favorite, or whatever. Catch you later.